right now at 11, a big relief for some Tigered seniors. This has been the greatest day that we could ever have. What saved a place some have called home for decades from a huge rent hike. Also tonight, yet another mail carrier robbed on their route. What police say the worker turned over under threat and what she refused to give up. And later. It was very scary at first. The worst of times and the best of friends. Yeah, it, feels, uh, it feels good to be able to move on and, and uh, live out the rest of my life. So call him the cardiac care cartoonist. It's a great way to deal with life. How one man's new heart came with a prescription in humor. Good evening, and we begin with an update from a group of seniors in Tigard fighting to stay in their low-income apartments. Thanks for joining us. I'm David Molko. Now, some of these residents lived there for years until they realized rent bills in that complex, which had essentially been stable for decades, we're about to skyrocket. Alma McCarty's in the newsroom. Alma, the news tonight, they have won their battle. So who stepped up to help? Yeah, David, it's Washington County that plans to buy the apartments and keep the property as affordable housing. Without that, the current owners were planning to raise rents to market value. A rent hike that steep would have priced many residents out, breaking apart their community. On a sunny afternoon in Tigard, Wood Spring apartment tenants celebrated a victory. I made this a home, you know, even though it's an apartment complex, this is home. This is just the biggest win for everybody. It's just the biggest relief that you could possibly hope for. And I thank God. The vote by Washington County commissioners to purchase the low income complex from a private investment company means this group can stay together. I think that's unanimous, so it, it's approved. Thank you. The Woodspring Tenants Association has advocated for this action since 2021 when they first got word that their affordable rent had an expiration date. We got this notice on the door that said, oh, Happy New Year, we're going market rate. I can't believe the callousness of this. Two years of organizing later, tenants can rest easier after the county's decision. We won at this point, and it means a lot because there's so many people in here. It's such a great little neighborhood. We don't have to worry about moving. We don't have to worry about the rent being so high that none of us can afford it. When we heard that news, it was like, oh, thank God, because I, cut, I cannot move again. I just cannot move again. That could have been the reality for many residents, including Peggy Hepler. She's lived at Woodspring since 2015. I fell in love with the place right off the bat. After a bad car wreck last summer, she leaned on this community while she recovered. I don't know how I would do this without my neighbors. The loss of that? devastating to think about. These last couple of years have been so stressful. When you're on Social Security only and it keeps going up and up and your money is going down and down because what their percentage of increase on your Social Security isn't even close to what the rent <laughs> increase is and it's like, okay, what can I do without? The county's agreement to purchase the property means Woodspring will remain affordable. When I moved in here, I planned to live here until they carried me out. And this has been the greatest day that we could ever have. In Tigard, Alma McCarty, KGW News. Great to see them toasting there. Developing tonight, postal inspectors are offering up to $50,000 for information that leads to a suspect who robbed a mail carrier. The USPS says a female postal worker was approached by a man between 20 and 30 years old, about 6'2". We're going to show you the surveillance photos of him wearing a tan jumpsuit and white tennis shoes in just a second. This was last Wednesday around midday in Northeast Portland's Cully neighborhood at 58th and Church Street. According to Portland police, the suspect demanded keys to the mailboxes and threatened to hurt her if she did not give them up. She handed over keys, but did not give up her car keys. Now, if this sounds at all familiar. It's because it's just the latest attack on mail carriers in our area. In our area, we've seen uh, an uptick in the last 12 to 15 months. Uh, we've had three total. Uh, we also had a letter carrier shot in December. It's been an uptick recently here, but I can't attribute it to any one item. Uh, nationally, I think we're seeing a kind of a, a trend in that direction as well. Well, officials say the mail carrier ran to a nearby home where a resident helped her out until police arrived. Authorities say she is physically okay, but understandably shaken up.
Let's get you caught up on tonight's other headlines now. Police have arrested two people accused of stabbing a TriMet bus driver in the leg. 28-year-old Anna Perez Velador appeared in court this afternoon to face assault charges. Police say she and another rider were the only two left on a bus at the end of the line last night. The driver asked them to get off. That is when police say Perez Velador stabbed the driver in the leg. The driver escaped through the bus window. They've since been treated and released from the hospital. A federal judge in Texas could decide tomorrow if an abortion bill should be pulled off the store shelves nationwide. The judge will be reviewing a lawsuit over Mifeprestone. A group of anti-abortion medical practitioners is suing the FDA, saying they didn't adequately evaluate that drug's safety. Now in Oregon and Washington and 20 other states, the pill is legal and can be prescribed by clinicians like Planned Parenthood. In 15 more states, it is also legal, has to be prescribed by a doctor. And some Oregon lawmakers want to stop the shutdown of a birthing center in Gresham. Three representatives sent a letter to the Oregon Health Authority asking them to deny Legacy's pending waiver to close the center at Mount Hood Medical, calling it a vital community resource. Now, in January, Legacy Health announced it would close the birthing center on March 17th. That is this Friday. Due to financial losses, a shortage of workers and low volume of births, lawmakers say they plan to hold a hearing later this month. Portland has just landed its largest ever convention, but the city's going to have to wait until the summer of 2025. That is when they will host the National Education Association's annual conference at the Oregon Convention Center. That is for members of teachers unions and 7,000 people are expected to take part. Travel Portland estimates the convention will bring in $18 million in just a week. 2025 folks.